But you mentioned 10 predictions. Give me several that you really kind of hoped wouldn't come true, but they did anyway. Well, I would say the one that I hoped wouldn't come true was inflation, but it just looked unavoidable. When you saw the money supply increase 40% over a couple of years, uh, that just it's, it's hard not to get fairly high inflation when that happens. But you know, nobody likes to see that. That tends to be hard on financial assets. You know, that's why this has been such a brutal year. 2022 was such a tough year because you had both stocks and bonds falling. So for, and I'm sure you have a lot of listeners that have a balanced portfolio where they've got, say, half their money in bonds and half their money in stock. And you would think that when stocks get hit, bonds go up or vice versa. That's typically how it is. They kind of counterbalance each other. But when inflation goes raging, then they both get hit. And unfortunately, that's what happened. Uh, I would say one of our certainly better predictions was energy, uh, where we were recommending clients protect from this uh, new world disorder, as you pointed out, by having uh, a healthy commitment to energy stocks, which a lot of brainiacs or so-called pundits, supposed pundits, were telling people to avoid that they were uninvestable. You know, don't buy things like oil and gas producers because you know, they're going to be put out of business by solar and wind and other renewables. And uh, despite all that negativity, or maybe because of it, because usually when there's negativity, there's very low prices. And so energy stocks this year are going to be up around 60%. So for 2022, including dividends, about 60, not 1.6, but 6.0 in a very tough year. And they had a great year last year. We really went kind of max bullish on them toward the end of 2020. And they have been incredibly rewarding for our clients. So that's the prediction that came true that I'm happy about. But, um, you know, just in general, it's, it's no fun to tell people that trouble is coming. And that's why I think Wall Street tends to always have kind of, you know, put on the happy face is that there's, uh, you know, there's, it's not great for business to be warning people that trouble's coming, but there are times you have to do it. And I think when you, if, if you really, if I really believed as I did that that was the biggest bubble of human history that we saw that really hit its peak last year, it was, I would have been, I really couldn't have looked myself in the mirror by not getting out there and, and warning about it as much as I publicly could. So it's, you know, that's, it's never never great to be a, a bearer of bad tidings. No, Unfortunately, it's as I not. said, I don't think we've seen them all play out yet. Well, and you've got, I mean, I wanted to ask you about the predictions, and I just did, that that you made that have come to fruition, you said about 10. Is there one of those or two of those that just had you going, well, crud, I didn't want to have to say that, but darn it, there it is. Well, I guess bonds would be another thing because, you know, the people that speculate in the profitless technology companies or the meme stocks or the cryptos, they kind of deserve what they get, right? I mean, they're, they're playing a very dangerous game. But when you're investing in the bond market, you're really not doing that. And, and one of our predictions was that it was going to be a very tough year for bonds. At the end of last year, uh, the 10-year, end of 2021, the 10-year Treasury note, so like a, a Treasury bill but with a 10-year maturity, and there are 30-year maturities, by the way, but the 10-year was only yielding about 1.5%. You know, at one point this year, the 10-year was yielding almost 4.25%. That is a massive up move in rates in a year. And what it does, when, when bonds are like a teeter-totter, so when rates move up, prices go down. So this has been, you know, at one point, it was the worst year for government bonds since basically the founding of the country. Now, there's been a bit of a rally with bonds here lately, too. Unfortunately, I think as we get into next year, we're going to see another spike in interest rates. So that's that, that's unfortunate. And, of course, if you take inflation into account, it's even worse. So let's say somebody lost 15% on their bonds, which was easy to do this year, even with high-grade bonds, and then inflation was 8 and they really lost 23% in terms of purchasing power. That's horrible. And that's very unfortunate because those people were – not trying to do anything crazy. What do they do? I mean, is there anything that they can do to build it back up, get a second job? What do they do? Well, unfortunately, I think that is happening, that people are having to take uh, second jobs in, in many cases. That's why you're seeing uh, some of these labor numbers look better because you've got people taking more than one uh -huh. job. So it's, I knew it. I knew that was what was going on. Oh, no, you're right. 
you say you don't follow this stuff, but you you get a lot of these things spot on. So well done. Well, but, I'm um, a logical, linear thinker. I can kind of figure some of these things out on my own without somebody in a blonde wig telling me what to do. I'm stuck <laughs> on that, aren't I? <laughs> but it's just so creepy. Well, it's uh, you said. What can they do? And I guess the, you know the happy part of this, or the the upside of all the downside, is that interest rates are up substantially. So, uh, you know, there is a lot of cash on the sidelines. I think if, if things have gotten ugly, people do what they normally do, which is you know raise cash. But if you're just sitting in the bank earning virtually nothing, that's not where it should be. There's all kinds of short-term securities out there that are risk-free, ignoring inflation for the moment, that pay you know four, four and a half percent. So whereas before cash was trash, you couldn't earn anything on it, now you can actually get a good yield with relatively short-term maturities. Uh, again, there's been a bond market rally lately, but uh, a few months ago it was possible to get, even a few weeks ago, corporate bonds yielding 6 to 7%. And you still can get kind of in that vicinity, but we are concerned that there's going to be another shakeout coming in the bond market. And the, the, the yield differential known as spread between corporate bonds and government bonds is, is I think, going to widen out. Part of it is because, Denise, I think we're going to have a severe profits recession in 2023, and I think oh, probably a general recession as well. And when that happens, corporate bonds get hit, and, of course, stocks really take it on the chin. And so far, I mean, the stock market really, at least if you've been in the traditional higher quality parts of the stock market, it's been a very orderly decline. And uh, there was a rally that started mid-October of 2022. And generally, you get this so-called Santa Claus rally in December. This year, you know, maybe Santa Claus came too early. Like, you know, they start celebrating Christmas, it seems like, uh, even before Halloween these days. And so maybe the Santa Claus rally came early, too. But I guess my, my concern is that this payback from the biggest bubble ever has not been complete. We've got more to come.